Hey guys, it's Billy here. We're in my office editing some videos like we do. One of the most common questions I get asked is, Billy, what camera do you have or how is your helmet cam set up? Hey guys, it's Billma here. Hey gang, it's Billma here. What's up guys? It's Billma here. What's up guys? Yeah, it's Billma here. Hey guys, it's Billma here. Now here on my dining room table, I've assembled a collection of all the various types of cameras that I've used over the years for my videos. And I've actually broken them up into different categories. Here, um, this is the pre-YouTube um, helmet cam setup. This is the YouTube early days setup. This is the YouTube second generation setup. Uh, these are your on bike camera setups, and these are what I call your off bike camera setups. First setup I want to go into is my pre-YouTube very first generation vlogging setup. Um, this post dates YouTube by about six months, or predates YouTube anyway, by about six months, and it consists of a JVC a digital um, mini camera, and it had these RCA cords that would actually hook into the JVC, and over here on the helmet we have a Viosport bullet cam. This is the very very first Viosport ever made, first gen, and all these cords were coming off here and then we had RCA jacks that would go into the RCA jacks of the camera like so. In addition we had this guy which was the power port and the power port hooked in to there and as you can see we had this battery pack and it had um, eight AA batteries and then had this big Velcro bundle that went around. It was pretty darn cumbersome and it had a microphone on it um, as you can see right there but there was no way in Hades you're going to get all this stuff stuffed inside the helmet so we had to have a separate audio recording device uh, made up of just a regular um, dictation type recorder and then I'd have this old school microphone here and uh, that I stuffed up in my helmet, then I'd edit the whole mess together later in post-production and make a vlog out of it. Um, one of these things, you know, you can see that it's extremely complicated and uh, extremely cumbersome. All right. We're now going through the pain in the ass that it is to get dressed. <laughs> trees are just, they smell wonderful. I mean, they're, I know it sounds kind of gay, like Martha Stewart and shit. So you guys, you younger vloggers, can consider yourself, consider yourself extremely lucky you didn't have to deal with all this crap. Um, not only was it huge and cumbersome, this thing was about $600 brand new, and this guy was about $300 brand new, and this thing was $40 or so, plus all the cables and stuff. So this was like about a $900 setup, so, um, and the quality sucked sucked ass at best so really uh, you know we have come a long way since the early days of vlogging now i don't want to burst anybody's bubble or try to take away from anybody's legend but like i said this is a pre youtube setup where i got the idea was in 2003 i went to a track day and part of the orientation of the track day is they made you watch a three minute video the video consisted of one of the instructors riding a bike around the track and he's going to show you the various corners, the various breaking points and whatnot. And it wasn't overdubbed later. It was a real time, um, probably a setup a lot like this, where the guy was actually talking while he was riding. And I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. And that's where I stole this idea from. This is, like I said, before YouTube. And that's where I got the idea. It wasn't my idea. But to me, in my heart of hearts, that is... Uh, the motorcycling instructors that put that video together were kind of the, the fathers of modern day motor vlogging. But that's all I have to say about that. On to phase two. Now the pre-YouTube days was an external mounted camera setup. The first generation vloggers went with an internal camera setup. It was either this, the horizontally mounted setup, or the vertically mounted setup. The horizontally mounted setup was generally a digital camera that just had a video um, recording function, while the vertically mounted setup was 
an actual just a small video camera usually with a flash drive so first of all let's talk about the horizontally mounted setup the horizontally mounted camera we're going to talk about is the Kodak V570 the Kodak V570 is basically to vlogging cameras what Kleenex is to tissue paper um, the very very first generations of vloggers use this camera and it's still widely used today um, the advantage of the V570 was it's relatively thin weight it doesn't have a telescoping lens, which all vlogging cameras need that, and it also had a very wide angle lens, so it gave you more of a wider angle so you could see part of the bike in the shot. Um, these are not made anymore. There is a sister camera. This is the V570. There is a sister camera called the um, 705, which is a high resolution um, picture camera, but the, the video is the same. The advantages of this camera are that it's extremely simple. It's a simple Velcro in and leave. Um, the disadvantage was the very limiting um, visibility that it caused. Other cameras that are used for the horizontally mounted setup are the Fuji Z series as well as the Sony T series. Of cameras. I won't go too much and don't get too caught up in these model numbers because you may be watching this video a year after all these cameras are obsolete. So if you can find something like that, it's a good setup for you. Um, just make sure that it doesn't have a telescoping lens and um, the wider the angle, the better. Next we go into the vertically mounted setup. This here is a Creative Vato HD. The advantage of the vertically mounted setup is that it gives you a lot more visibility over the horizontally mounted setup. Um, the disadvantage is that these cameras usually don't shoot as high quality as this. This is an HD camera, but I, it's probably one of the worst in terms of quality HD I've ever seen. A lot of people have had a lot of success with the Creative Auto HD, but me particularly, I don't like it. Um, I think the audio is very tinny and it is not a Mac compatible um, format, so I have to use my Windows machine for this, and it gets really, really cumbersome having to transfer it, but um, these things are pretty cheap now. You can get them for about 90 bucks. Other vertically mounted cameras you can look into are the Kodak ZI8, I believe, as well as the Flip Mino and the Sony Bloggy. The next generation of vlogging cameras is this guy, the uh, Contour HD. It's kind of funny because we're actually taking a step back and going with the external setup. The Contour fits right there, it's all self-contained. The advantages of the Contour are ease of use, obviously it doesn't uh, hinder your visibility at all, and it is an HD camera. The disadvantages are the quality is not all that good. Um, the, the very edges tend to blur out as well as the, the picture is very oversaturated. My big, big issue with this is there's no external mic port and the microphone really is terrible so you have to go back to the old school way of having a secondary audio recording system. But for action shots and stuff, the Contour is pretty darn good and I have to give it a thumbs up. Um, the first generation of Contours had a really weird battery problem and they're, they've had some issues but I think they've fixed that um, since then. Next, people have been mounting these guys on their helmets, so I kind of consider them helmet cams, I guess. And these are your GoPros. And uh, let me switch off the camera and pop them out. Mm -hmm. 